so welcome back to my channel today we are doing another pigment video this time on one of the pigments that i think is crazy because unlike potter's pink where it has so many variations that look similar but the shade of pink is different pbr7 has so many different names and the colors look so different it's everything from raw sienna to burnt umber in my palette and I have it from a variety of brands and all of them look different. If you've seen the Mixing Grays videos or even the, I think it was in the Potter's Pink video, we started with the Cypress Raw Umber Deep, but I think in every single video we've had to go to one of the other eight I have in my palette at some point in the video because it just hasn't been the right PBR7. So today I thought I'd, we'd look at all of the different PBR7s I have, why I have collected nine different versions of what is technically the same pigment, and then I thought we'd mix them each with Potter's Pink just to see what the difference is. How different do they actually look when mixed? So I'm going to label the page and then we're going to get into painting. So. Everything is now labeled and I've pre-wet all the pans. So we're going to go in with the Michael Wilcox Raw Sienna, which is by far the lightest PBR7 that I have. I would say that it's almost a yellow ochre. Apparently I had a tiny bit of green in my brush still. So let's that up and let's redo the swatch. There we go. That looks better. It's basically almost a yellow ochre with a little bit more brown to it. Then we have Michael Wilcox Burnt Sienna, which is very much more orange. You can definitely tell that there's a significant color difference. This is Holbein Burnt Umber. It's one of my preferred browns. Currently, I only have it in a mini pan, but I do plan to get a bigger pan of it. Because I do really like the color. This is Holbein Burnt Sienna, which is again much more orange than a burnt umber while still technically being the same pigment. So the pigment variation is based on how it's harvested, where it's harvested, and how it's processed. You see a whole lot of color variation and then there are cypress colors as well or Italian colors. So Gingerbread by Cosmic Creation is an Italian burnt sienna. Uh, Mocha by Cosmic Creation is a Cypress Burnt Umber Deep, I believe, yes. Uh, and then Roman Small is Cypress Raw Umber Deep. Daniel Smith doesn't label it that detailed, they just have Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna. I just happen to not like their versions. This is Raw Umber. This is one of my most used colors. I really like Raw Umber. Currently the Roman Small version is my most used, but for a long time I didn't have it in my palette and so I use the Daniel Smith one a lot. It's great for toning colors without adding black. It's great for creating granulating colors. Here's Cosmic Creations Gingerbread which is an Italian burnt sienna, I believe. Yeah, it's an Italian burnt sienna. But in the shop, it is called gingerbread, which I love, because it does remind me of gingerbread. It's slightly darker than 
either of these two burnt siennas. It's got more brown to it and slightly less orange. And then this is the Cypress Burnt Umber Deep, which is in the Cosmic Creation Shop as Mocha. It is quite a dark color. And then, finally, we have Cypress Raw Umber Deep, which is my most used brown. It's the brown that I use in all of our mixing videos when I'm doing anything that involves a PBR7. It's always the one I start with, mostly because it feels the most neutral out of all of the ones that I have. And so if I'm doing a mixing, I feel like starting with the most neutral PBR7 is a good starting point. So now we're going to mix them all with Potter's Pink just to show the difference in using them in a mix with one other color. Do you want to do a cup of Potter's Pink and Lapis or just Potter's Pink? Let's do just Potter's Pink. So this is Raw Sienna and Potter's Pink. This is Burnt Sienna. Here is burnt umber and potter's pink. It is the hard part about mixing from these little pans. It's sometimes hard to make sure you get the same amount of pain that you could get. We have burnt sienna and potter's pink. That one's definitely got the most like orangey undertone to it, which is obvious. Even as like a color on the palette on the swatch, it looks very orange. We have burnt umber. And potter's pink. We have raw umber and potter's pink, which is one of my favorite, favorite mixes. It's like moody and pinkish and it doesn't take very much of a color to change a raw umber and like change the undertone of it but it still has like that moody brownness of it while having a pink tinge. And that's one of my favorite things about the raw umber. It's one of the reasons that Cypress raw umber is always the PBR7 I use in mixes because I just feel like it's most neutral. Here 
going to gingerbread. I've actually mixed these two together, so I'll be interested to see if there's any change. The cypress raw umber deep seems like it would eat up all the pink. You never really know. Sorry, cypress burnt umber deep. This is raw umber deep. Yeah, it sort of ate up all the pink. And then burnt umber deep, uh, raw umber deep, <laughs> and the pink, so you can see the difference, like that's a much more neutral Let's, this is a burnt sienna, this is a Michael Wilcox one, this is a burnt sienna, and this is a burnt sienna. This is a burnt umber. This is a burnt umber. This is burnt umber. Siennas? I think so. This is a raw sienna. And this is a raw sienna. Sorry, raw umber. I don't think we have any other raw siennas. I think there's only this one. Yeah. So there we go. So everything's dry now and I added the swatch of the potter's pink that I mixed with. If I had to choose one that I'd add to my palette, I've gone back and forth about the raw umber from Daniel Smith or the raw, the Cypress raw umber from Roman Small. I think it has to be the Roman Small one simply because I prefer the granulation of it, but there are definitely a lot of really fun options up there. The Holbein Burnt Umber is also really cool. I enjoy how adding Potter's Pink to it, like you can see more of the purpley undertones of it. I don't think you can really go wrong with a PBR7. It's one of the pigments that I added to my palette very early on. I, when I first was putting together my palette, had each of my pans labeled with a number and so the burnt umber was actually the 15th color i added to my palette and the raw umber was the 16th color i added to my watercolor palette ever so they were pretty early on in creating my palette and i still love them these pans have been refilled a bunch of times and my tubes are almost empty overall though i think 
If I was choosing one, it would be the Roman small. I like the granulation of it best. If I was choosing two, it would actually be the Roman small and this Holbein because I like the brown of it. And I feel like the Michael, especially the Michael Wilcox Ross Sienna has too much yellow. It's too similar to a yellow ochre for me. And lots of the other like Sienna colors, I'm finding when they're swatched out with all the other PBR 7s, they lean too orange for my taste. I do paint with them, but never with burnt umbers on the same page. And when they're swatched out all together, I'm looking at them and going, I don't like this. Like they just seem too orange. I prefer a more neutral brown. So a raw umber and a burnt umber are probably the two browns I'd go for if I was building my palette from scratch again. But I think mixing them all with the potter's paint did help me see them differently because it let me see how they, one, tone, and two, how they granulate. Especially because I think I expected more granulation from some of them and I didn't get it. I always think of PBR7 as being a granulating color and really it's only certain variations that do granulate. So I hope you enjoyed watching all these different versions of PBR7. Do you have a favorite version? If so, let me know. Is there a version that I should try that I haven't tried? I'm always looking for color recommendations to try out. I love getting to explore different new pigments and as always, thank you for watching.